Hi everyone, The Book of Dharma by Simon Haas. I absolutely love this book and I found this great interview by Mr. Haas where he is discussing the four principles of dharma as described in the Hindu scriptures. So let me show you what I found. So this one is a speech that he gives in United Nations in 2019. That is the first time I came across his book and his work. So let us listen. To help resolve the world's most difficult challenges, we need outstanding leadership. In ancient India, the rishis or sages understood that the quality of a leader's decision making is paramount. It determines the future of generations. They therefore devised a system for making wise decisions called the Dharma Code. The Dharma Code is a set of four yoga principles truth, purity, non violence, and discipline. So, this is what he is talking about here. And let me show you an interview where he elaborates on these principles. There are a few points that I have highlighted, and I want to go through these. And uh, I want you to take away from this video a series of thoughts so that you can implement them in your life to live your best version. Thank you. So this is the interview that I'm talking about. The host of the interview did a spectacular job. Um, however, I'm going to focus on what Mr. Haas has to say. But please watch this interview and it's full to get the full context. Here I'm only highlighting a few points. You meant in the book, uh, I'll hold it up here for those that are able to see the book of Dharma. Uh, but, but in this book, you mentioned that there was a certain point where you began to, if you were approaching, let's say, these ancient texts or this tradition uh, for knowledge, uh, to, but or like for information, let's say. But at a certain point, you shifted and, and understood, actually, these are for self-transformation. Right, right. Yeah. Um, well, one, one very interesting thing about the, the text of ancient India is that they're not self-help books. So that's obviously a genre that, that, that's a recent... Um, uh, it's a recent genre from, from our contemporary Western world. Okay. So as I began looking through the, t the texts of India, I, I reached um, like a limit to how deeply I could enter into them. For one thing, they're in, in Sanskrit. They're in codified form. There's a whole universe of meaning within, within each shloka or verse or within each line. And um, it also became clear that, that these texts are aiming not at information, but at transformation. Mm. So as he's studying Indian scriptures, he is thinking that these are for self-transformation, not just for information. That is what he just said. And the next thing he says about is how this is Raja Vidya. Let us listen to what he says. I, I love what you mentioned about this being a knowledge for kings and queens. Mm. And you see that throughout throughout many texts. Even in the, the Bhagavad Gita, there's the famous uh, verse, Raja Vidya Raja Guyam. So we often translate that as, as uh, Raja Vidya, the king of knowledge. Mm. Uh, our um, acharyas or commentators in our tradition, they translate that in both ways. Sometimes the king of knowledge and at other times, they also translate it as a knowledge for kings. I see. And the secrets for the kings. And see, that's right. Yeah, that's okay. right. <laughs> so this is a, it's a guarded knowledge and a knowledge that, that um, was originally intended for decision makers. So in our life, if we make a decision, um, it'll affect those immediately around us, our, our family members, colleagues, friends. If a queen or a king makes a decision, it'll affect an entire kingdom, maybe mm. thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. It'll be the difference, it could be the difference between an entire nation going to war or prospering. Mm. So the rishis or sages of India, they understood that the, the quality of decision making of a, of a monarch is paramount. And they developed these teachings that are um, essentially for these decision makers. Mm. But having said yeah. that, in, yeah. we are also in many ways like queens and kings. We have, we have a, a kingdom, and that kingdom is our, is our life, our perceptual world. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, our perceptual world will never be better 
than the design principles we use to create it. So exactly. So here what he's saying is you don't have to necessarily be a king or a queen to adopt these principles. You are very much the king or the queen of your own kingdom, your own life. So why not design them with the principles of dharma? That's what he's talking about here. And what is the dharma code? Um, the, the Sanskrit word dharma has different meanings depending on context. So when we see that word in, 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 in the Sanskrit verses of, from, it, from the texts of India, it can mean slightly different things. So sometimes dharma can mean one's, one's nature or purpose, as in svadharma. Mm -hmm. um, here, dharma means, in, in particular, it means when the quality of our thoughts, our words and our actions are such that the universe supports us in our efforts. So the word dharma comes from the verbal root dri, which in Sanskrit means to support or to sustain. Mm -hmm. So often when I, when I, uh, when I explain this, I, I, I tell people about the, the Wright brothers, who mm -hmm. in 1903, they created the first flying machine. Mm -hmm. So it took the Wright brothers, they, they designed many different shapes of wings, hundreds actually, before they had just the right shape of wing. And with the right shape, something incredible happens. A contraption that's so heavy that, that even several people can't lift it. With the right shape of wing, it rises into the sky, carrying a passenger. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, with the right um, principles of design in our life, then something remarkable happens. We live in accord with what we might call the hidden laws of life. And the universe sustains us in, in our efforts. So this is amazing. What he's trying to say is if you have the right set of principles, it is very easy to elevate yourself to your highest potential. That's what Mr. Haas is saying here. In this section, he's going to talk about the four codes. The Mahabharata. Even some of these principles are, are discussed in the Upanishads. So in, in Canto, the first book of the Srimad Bhagavatam and the 17th chapter, um, there, there is a section that describes the four principles that make up the Dharma code. And these are uh, truth, mm -hmm. purity, mm -hmm. non-violence, and discipline. So in the next segment, he elaborates on each one of these four principles. It's a great, great interview, guys. Again, I have watched it many times and I thought of sharing this because I got so much value out of this. Just for me to understand and think about the principles of life that I want to lead. But one aspect of truth that I like to focus on very much is, is being true to our nature. Because there are so many, um, there's so much in our society that... Uh, there, there are pressures to not be true to who we are as, as a person. Yeah. So the, the, the text of India explained that we each have a particular individual nature and we're not all built or constructed in the same way. And we have in our society various ideas of what it means to be successful. Sorry guys, I don't know why this is looking blurry. I think it's my internet connection. But the point is, uh, if you try to see what he's saying, we are not usually true to ourselves because we are going after somebody else's definition of what success should look like in our lives. Um, and there is a very key point he talks about. I just want to skip to that and then let's think about that. The, the, the number one regret of dying patients was, yes. I wish I'd had the courage to lead a life true to myself rather than the life that others expected of me. Mm. I wish I'd had the courage to lead a life you know, true to my nature. And um, we find those same teachings in, for, for instance, the Bhagavad Gita, thousands of years earlier, where Krishna says to Arjuna, it's better to follow your nature, even if you make mistakes, than to follow another path, someone else's path, and, and do that perfectly. So we can have all the trappings of success, 
the, the, the symbols of status or however we want to measure it, um, the car, the bank balance, the, the address, the postcode, however we want to measure it. If we're not living a life that's true to the nature we've been given in this, mm. in this life, we will always struggle. There will always be an emptiness. So I want to pause here. Uh, I would rather just play the entire video because it's so good. But I want you to please watch this video in its entirety and also understand what he's trying to talk about when he's talking about purity, when he's talking about non-violence, and he's talking about discipline, tapas, that is so much needed for anything else and everything else to work in our lives. You might have all these great ideas incubating in your head, but unless you have the discipline to sit down and actually put your work into it, nothing is going to happen. So please watch this video. I'm going to put some important timestamps along with the link for this and, um, you know, live your best life, the Dharma Code way. Thank you.